So we're moving into something, we're moving into electricity. And before we get to electricity, we need to have an understanding of how charges work. And charges come in two forms. We have positive charges and we have negative charges. And we see these in the atom. Um, normally a proton will be positive, or not normally, a proton is positive. An electron is negative and neutrons are neutral. They don't have a charge at all. So what happens is if we have lots of proton, we have if we have more protons than electrons on a certain object, it will have a positive charge. If we have more electrons than protons, it will have a negative charge. And naturally it wants to be at a, a base of zero. But if it has charges, if it has charges, um, we those charges will interact in a couple of different ways. If they're the same charges, they will push away, they'll repel. So if they're both positive or they're both negative, they'll push each other away, they'll repel, they will, it, it'll be an actual force pushing away. If the charges are opposite of each other, so opposite, they will attract. And since there's only two charges, this happens when they are positive and negative. So if you have one positive charge, one negative charge, they will attract. And the repulsion or attraction is driven by the sign on the charges, not the strength of the charges. The strength of the charges will help us figure out the actual force that's going on there. So this is how it sets up. So if we had a positive charge here and a positive charge here, they would push each other away and they would move that way. If we had a positive charge here and a negative charge there, they would pull toward each other. And if we had a negative and a negative, they would also push away. And so that's the basis that we're talking about for what is going on with this. Now, the thing that happens is depending on how big these charges are will depend on how much will help us figure out how much force is actually acting between the two charges that are present. And in order to do that, we're going to use a force equation and it looks a lot like the gravitation equation. Uh, gravity was with masses and a distance. Here we have charges in a distance. So this is Fe equals K Q1 Q2 over D squared. So the charge of the first one, whatever the first one is, the charge of the second one, whatever the second one is, one and two are arbitrary. It's just indicating that there are two different charges. And then the distance in between them will give you the force. So the force, it has a little E subscript. So it is electric force, still measured in Newtons though, it's a force. The Qs are our charges and they're measured in Coulombs. It's just a letter C. And then the distance in between them is still measured in meters. This is one of those cases where it actually has to be meters. It is not able to be centimeters or millimeters. If it's in one of those, you'll need to shift it. As with our gravity equation, we have a constant here. This is Coulomb's constant, and we'll use 9 times 10 to the 9th. Whole bunch of units again, Newtons times meters squared per coulombs squared. We don't need to worry so much about the units. It just cancels out everything. So we're left with Newtons over here. We do need to see, to worry, to use this number in there every time. Sometimes, depending on what you're looking at, this number might be written as 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. That is close enough that we're always gonna reference that as nine. So don't worry if you see it one way or another, it's okay to use this. It's okay to use either one of them, uh, but we'll talk about it like this. It's just fewer buttons to push in your calculator and absolutely close enough to talk about it in the way that we do. And so you have your force, you have your charges, you have your distance. Like we did with the force between large masses, the bigger the, the mass with those, 
um, would be the bigger the force here, the bigger the charge is, the bigger the force. So if I increase this charge, the force goes up. If I increase this charge, the force goes up. If I separate it farther, the force goes down. And we'll do some more with that and those figuring those out as we go. So this is the main equation. This is the main idea that same charges repel. They push each other away. So positive, positive, or negative, negative. And the opposites attract. They pull toward each other. This is how you calculate the strength of that attraction or repulsion. I'm gonna do a sample problem here. Again, we will use these do it using scientific notation. And so as we're doing that, remember there's a video that's on Schoology to help you with your own calculator on that. And so let's say that we have, uh, let's say we have two charges. We're gonna say that charge one is equal to 6.5 times 10 to the negative 6 uh, coulombs. Charge 2 is equal to 7.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Usually the charge numbers are going to be something really small like this. Sorry, I didn't have that up there. Uh, the distance we'll say between these two ends up being, uh, we're going to say is 0 0.15 meters. So 15 centimeters, it'll be written as 0.15 meters. We know that our K value equals 9 times 10 to the 9th uh, newtons times meters squared per coulomb squared, and we will charge, we will solve for the force. And that's Fe. So we set it up just like we did. Again, I know that uh, that scientific notation can be complicated sometimes. So the best thing you can do is get your variables, get it set up the best as possible. You won't be penalized if it's set up well and there's something that is off on the calculation. And so we'll put these numbers in here, we'll, or we have our equation, F of E equals K, Q1, Q2 over D squared. And we can put our numbers in there. So our electric force is equal to nine times 10 to the ninth. We'll keep the units out at this point just to keep it clear. And then we'll have times both of our charges. So we'll put a line up here and I'll have 6.5 times 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. And I have 7.5 times 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. And then we have a distance of 0 0.15 meters and we're going to square just that number. So remember in your calculator that you'll use the EE -E button or the E button or whatever that looks like, and you'll put it in. You'll put it in nine times 10 to the ninth times 6.5 times 10 to the negative sixth times 7.5 times 10 to the negative sixth, and then divide by 0.15 squared. Only the 0.15 is squared. When you do that, you'll end up with your force that's due to the electric charge of 0 0.44. Uh, newtons. So it's not a big char uh, not a big force, but it's a teeny teeny tiny particle that's actually experiencing that force. So if we looked at it like this, let's say these these are these don't indicate a charge, so we can assume they're both positive. And what that means is if you had one of the charges here and you had one of the charges here, you would have a force of 0.44 newtons in between them, and that force would be pushing them both away. And so if they were able to move, they would they would shoot apart in opposite directions because they're both of the same charge. So I went to school today and did some demos. There I am, hello. And I have a pop can on there, and then I have a piece of plastic and some rabbit fur. And what happens is right now I'm taking the rabbit fur and rubbing it over the piece of plastic. And in doing that, the plastic is gaining some electrons and it's gaining a negative charge. And so you can see that with that, the pop can moved just a little bit. Pop can has a slightly positive charge. And so as I'm pulling that, there's a force that's being created between the negative charge of the plastic and the positive charge of the can, and it is causing the can to move. And so I'm gonna take and add some more electrons on there. So it's more negative and you can see that it's moving easier each time as the charge of the rod increases. And so that happens because you have opposite charges and opposite charges attract. With these cups, styrofoam behaves a little bit differently here. And what's happening when I take and 
put the rabbit fur on the styrofoam cups is that the styrofoam loses electrons to the fur. And so the styrofoam, in losing those electrons, it becomes more positive. And because both of them are positive, they're going to repel each other. Similar charges will always repel each other. And the more charge they have, the more they'll repel each other. But remember that the plastic has a negative charge. And so if you take the plastic and put it in between there, you'll see that the styrofoam cups are drawn to the plastic because the styrofoam cups have a positive charge and the plastic has a negative charge. And so when I move that near one of the cups, the cup is attracted to it and it can be pulled away. So you can see that those two cups are repelling each other, but the cups are drawn into the plastic. And if I take and put the plastic in between, they'll both be drawn in, but they'll still not be directly across from each other because they're still repelling each other in the process. 